We are so blessed to have Pastor Rolando with us. Um, he is our new newest missionary in Mexico. Rolando is a pastor of a church down there. Um, when I went to Mexico a couple of months ago in October, my wife and I and uh, one of our elders, Mark and Kathy Bellamy, we went down to speak at Pastor Victor's 20th anniversary. And um, as I got ready to speak, they introduced me to my uh, translator, and it was Rolando. I hadn't met him before. Um, I started speaking, uh, preaching that morning. It was the best message I've ever given in my whole life. I don't know what he said. I know what I said. <laughs> But, <laughs> I mean, it was really good. And so at the end of the message, there was an altar call. I didn't even call for an altar call. No, that's not true. But it was just, uh, we, we met there. We met that Saturday morning, hadn't met him before. It was a divine appointment. We came this close to not even going because of what was going on with Joy and Dell. And um, we were supposed to be with them. We were supposed to stay with them. And, um, of course, you know, they were up here and Joy was in the hospital. We almost didn't go. And uh, Rolando was invited to drive from Tijuana over to um, Nogales, came on his own, um, hardly knew Pastor Victor, had met him a couple times. It was just a divine appointment. The Lord put us together. He interpreted my message the next morning. We got to share breakfast together, and we just began to become friends over the course of the weekend. And uh, Mark and Kathy and Diane and I were uh, walking out of the hotel one morning, and we all said the same thing. Man, this isn't, this isn't just an, a chance encounter. This is a divine appointment. And uh, we uh, took them on immediately. We're now supporting them. But uh, we got this. I got, I'm going to share it again. If you've heard it before, just bear with me. If you haven't heard it, it's such a great story. Uh, Pastor Rolando sent me an email. Um, their Nissan Xterra that uh, they drive back and forth across the border with was failing in its health. It was wore out. And um, he, he drives to San Diego. He has dual citizenship. So he drives to San Diego, and he would load the back of that Nissan Xterra up with food, and then they would take some of it to a little storage locker in San Diego because you can't take a van or a car full of food across the border. They would charge you duty. So he unloads some of it in a, a little storage area and then takes the rest down to San Diego, or I mean to Tijuana, gives it away. Then he'll go back two or three times during the week and bring more food and give it away. Well, that whole thing started with they were going through some really difficult times as a family. And uh, he had a connection in San Diego who had some food, and he said, hey, come up, come up, and we're going to give you some food. So he drives up, and this connection loads their car up with food, and Rolanda heads back across the border, and uh, as soon as he gets into Tijuana, he gives most of the food away that his friend had just given him. And the friend calls him like a week later, and he says, how's it going with the food? And he says, well, it's all gone. And the friend said, how did you eat that much food in a week? And he said, well, I didn't. I gave it away. And uh, in, that, in that act of giving it away, it became a ministry that they now give food away uh, two or three times a week in Tijuana. Well, their car failed. And so he'd sent an email, and we have uh, just some generous people in our church you guys gave to that. You didn't know that, but you did. And uh, we have a great connection. Uh, one of the men in our church owns a car lot, so he's buying cars all the time. And he helped us buy a car, helped us locate it. And that car is now sitting uh, in our plaza out there. It's that gray van. It has a red ribbon on it. You guys, buy, there's a picture of it right there. So... <clears throat> we, had, we had to get the car to Tijuana. And uh, either I could drive it, which I'm all in, because any chance I can get to go to Mexico, I, I love that. But we just thought, what a great opportunity to have Rolando come and speak at our church, and then he would drive the car back to Tijuana with his daughter. His wife couldn't come. Yesterday, we uh, went up the McKinsey Highway. They had never seen snow. And uh, so I asked him, would you want to go to the ocean, or would you like to go to the snow? Oh, we want to go to the snow. And so we start driving up 126, and we get about Belknap, maybe a little bit further east, and there's a little white stuff on the ground, and they're like, oh, look at the white stuff. And Pastor Rolando's got his phone out, and he's, you know, 
FaceTiming Ruby who couldn't be with us, and I'm thinking to myself, that's not snow, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's nothing, but it's pouring down rain, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, please, we need to see some snow, and so we kept driving, and we, you know, the further we went east, it's just pouring down rain, and uh, the snow is accumulating a little bit, you know, maybe it's this deep now, and they're like, oh, look at the snow, and I'm thinking, that's not snow, and uh, we got up past the junction there at Clear Lake, and I mean, it started snowing. And we got into about 16 inches of snow and made a snow angel and threw snowballs and uh, made a video and stopped at Sahaley Falls on the way back. And so we had a great time. But now, Rolando needs to get in that van and drive over the Siskiyou Pass He's never seen snow, never been in snow. Now he's going to drive in snow. So uh, would you pray that the hand of the Lord is on them as they leave today? They are going to leave right after church uh, so they can hopefully get through the Siskiyous in the daylight. And I'm going to be calling you like a, a, a worried parent, actually. You know, Tell me where you are. Tell me where you are. Um, man, we are so blessed to have a church that loves missions, aren't we? We're so rich because of that. We're so rich because of what we give. We have gained more than we have given. And uh, this divine appointment is going to bring fruit for years to come. I believe that. I believe we've built dozens of buildings in Mexico. And I just believe as the Lord provides, all you guys in the trades, come on. I believe as the Lord provides that we'll be building buildings in Tijuana now. And so uh, I, just, I just love how the Lord works. Uh, we were driving home yesterday, and, and I just asked Rolando, I said, just dream with me. What, what could we build, you know? And we start talking about uh, a place for kids, an orphanage, a place for young adults, and what it would look like. And, and I'm thinking, man, I'm, I'm 60 years old. I don't know if I got it in me, you know, to, to do that again. And it's like, yes, I, I got it in me. Do you got it in you? Yeah, we're going to do it. So uh, I love God. I love the divine appointments. He gives us kids, young kids. You're going to the mission field with us, more of you. Amen? So start saving your pennies. I want to take you. Church, I want you to welcome this amazing man, this amazing leader, Rolando, as he comes and shares the word with us. Come on, Calvary. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. Um, yeah, my wife uh, sends you a big hug from Tijuana, Mexico. She still can't cross, hoping soon she will cross and we submit the papers and everything so she can be willing to cross the border. And, but Abby, my daughter, is here with us and, and we're so grateful to be here and amazed. It's been a blast weekend that we have spent here with Pastor Kirk, with uh, all the team, the ministry, and, and now seeing these two services, the morning service, and now this service, and seeing new faces. Uh, I know the body of Christ is it's so awesome, because, I mean, we're bond in, in a spiritual way, uh, and in different ways, and, and well, we're blessed here. And Well, um, I'm excited to be uh, talking a little bit about what God has done, and I feel that when Pastor Kirk told us about as the subject about talking about in December is gratefulness and gratitude, and, and I started thinking about it and started saying, okay, there's a lot of good uh, super Bible hero men that I can talk about it, I can speak about it, and, and there's a lot of awesome stories in the Bible that that I'm all the time have been challenged through them and 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 learn about that and and. And I was reading and, and writing down everything, and then I erase it back again, and then read it again, and do it again. And, and then I got stuck in a moment, and I talked to my wife, and I said, hey, I don't have a sermon yet. I was like, wow. And it was a week before coming here, and, and I usually don't do that when they buy me outside where we pastor, because I, I, I like to be in the comfort zone. I, I enjoy being in the comfort zone. So, so I was like, no, this is not going to happen. It's my first time outside of our country. 
flying away, Oregon. They never met us. We, we just, I just translated, and the pastor probably doesn't even know what I spoke when I was translating him. And I'm going to be preaching in the church, and, and, and I don't want to do a big mess in the church. So, so, so I was so worried about it and, and thinking about it and what to talk. And, and, and then um, I have a few things that God has spoke to my life during our life and ministry and what we have done. Uh, and, and I want to talk to you about something about that. In First Thessalonians 5.18, the Bible says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And, and I wrote uh, something there that it gra grabbed my attention. And it's not the happy people who is grateful is the grateful people who is happy it, and it got me it got me so involved in that part that I that I start thinking about it and in thinking about what's going what's about this and and it guided me to think about how we are so grateful as human mean human beings because as human beings we're grateful when we have good things we are grateful when we open a Christmas gift aren't we grateful yeah, if it's something good that we like, right? We're so grateful. And when, when they give you something, you're so grateful. You say thank you, right? As a human beings, we're persons that we are, we are gratitude manifest. But manifesting Christ is our goal, our daily living that we have to do, manifesting Christ. So when I start thinking about there's two ways of being grateful, we can be grateful through our human life, because as humans, we can be grateful. But we are thankful as a human beings, not in all circumstances, just in a few circumstances, right? Yeah, a few circumstances, we are thankful as human beings. But the Bible says, be thankful in all circumstances. And that is where we get like, okay, how can I be grateful in all circumstances? Because when I have something, I'm grateful. But when I don't have what I want or what I need or I wish I will have, then all circumstances, it doesn't apply, right? It doesn't apply. We're like, okay, no, God, I think Apostle Paul writes something wrong there. We should correct it or erase it and just put some circumstances. But the Bible talks about on John Chapter 3, verse 5 and verse 7, Jesus, and the verse 5 says, replied, and he said, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Verse 6, humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to the spiritual life so don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. I thought this verse it was only applying for outreach and new believers, for the new people, for the newborn. But the Bible it goes more deep on there. It says there's the human life and there's the spiritual life. So as Christians, we are born again. We born from the spirit. We have a spiritual life. So it's hard to be grateful if we live by our human life. So hard, so hard. Being honestly, when, when, when I got sick in one of my arteries, God uh, um, caught, was it, forgot the word of it? Plug. When I got that, I lost my job. We lost our house. We lost the money that we were saving to do the down payment for the house that we were going to have. And then after that, we lost our, li uh, our insurance for health insurance, and I was sick. I started paying and paying the hospital. After the same time, my daughter, little one, three years old, she got salmonella, and then my other daughter got salmonella, and then my wife got salmonella, and then I got salmonella at the same time. So all our money, all our savings, everything that we have, we lost it right there. We lost the house. We lost everything. And at that moment, at that point, I feel like, how can I say thank you, God? Really? Like, how can I say thank you? 
But when I was in those moments, like hard moments, I mean, everything can happen to you, but when something happens to your daughters, to your family, it's like, okay, that's something different. That's, that's something that I don't want to go there. And, and I start complaining with God. I start saying, God, okay, God, I'm a pastor. I'm serving you. I'm doing ministry. I'm doing this, that. My funds and money that I get, I, I don't only tithe. I also give more money offering so the church and the ministry can, con can continue and everything. Now I don't have a job. I don't have a house. My family is sick. Everyone's sick. We don't have money anymore. Our two cars, we sold it also. And we were just there, just there. And I was still sick. And it's in those moments when God starts speaking to my life and God starts talking to my life and said, human beings, human beings manifest thankfulness from their human side. But spiritual lives will manifest thankfulness to God because the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is something so different than the human life it doesn't understand. The Holy Spirit lives in our lives, and the fruit of the Spirit, there's a fruit that He manifests, and the fruit is manifested through our human life. In our human life, it doesn't understand it. Our mind thinking, it doesn't understand it. How can we be grateful if we don't have nothing? How can I be grateful if I am having struggling, if my marriage is, is about to falling apart, if my family is broke, if, if I lost my job, if I left this, and I, if I don't have things around me, how can I be grateful? But the Bible says in Galatians 5, I think it is, that the spirit, it is a fruit that is manifested in our lives. And, and it manifests peace. What else? Joy. Love. Amen. If you, if you see all that, it's talking about being thankful. Yeah. It's being thankful. The fruit of the Spirit manifests all this. Finding, we can be grateful, a grateful person, humans only. Or we can be grateful persons from the spiritual life. Philippians Chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 7. It says this. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and mind as you lived in Christ. Finding simple little things to give thanks for, that's something that sometimes we forget, don't we? When I was, when I was thinking about talking to you guys, I was more thinking about myself, and I started making a list, and I started making, okay, why I am grateful? Which areas that I am grateful for, and why? Do I am grateful for the little things? Do I'm being grateful? I have gratitude for whatever God has given to me because the, my condition that I have as a human being, it tells me all the time, okay, that doesn't apply right here. This doesn't apply right here. But my position that I have in Christ as a newborn, it tells me you're a conqueror. You conquered everything through Christ. God already healed you. In the spirit, you're healed. God give you a new life. God give you everything and abundantly. Even if you don't see it, even if you don't think about it, even when you felt like you don't have it right here in the human life, but in the spirit, the Bible says we are positioned with him in heavenly places. Isn't it what the Bible says? That's what the Bible says. But usually we live more by our senses that we felt that we feel what we have, what has been going around. If, if we did our Santa Claus, uh, what is it, like the, the letter that you wrote, write down as kids or youth, and then you don't receive it sometimes, the gift that you were talking about or thinking about it, then what happens? Amen. We, our human side, all the time, it tells us, and it's telling you, it's fine if you're not grateful right now. Our human life all the time tells it's okay. You don't have to say thank you. You earn it. Amen? You earn it. 
Don't say thank you. It's okay. You got it. You earned it. It's yours. It's great. You have it. But the fruit of the Spirit, it tells us all the time that the life of the Spirit is so different than the type of living of this world. The Bible says that we are in this world, but we don't belong to this world. That we stay here because we are the light of the world. And when I was sick there, and I was so feeling so bad on that part, I, said, I, I told God, I told him, okay, this is so bad. I never went through this. I didn't sign for this. I, I, I didn't like it. I, I don't feel that it's not comfortable. It's not good. What can I say to my family? What can I gotta say to everyone there? God, I was amazed. And, and years pass over. We lost our building also, by the way, our church building ministry, because we didn't have the money to pay to rent and pay the funds and everything to do it. And, and, and I'm saying to be all oh, poor brother here. No, I'm saying it because when you are and you start moving everything in your life under your condition, then we can start forgetting what he did on the cross for us, what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a new believer, what it means to be someone that starts living by faith. You know that faith, it's in the little, little detailed things that we have each day. Just waking up at morning, seeing those big trees that you guys have here around it, and just watching them. I was like so amazed. Pastor was saying, oh, you're saying, oh, wow, wow, wow. I was so amazed just watching everything here and, and watching all the stuff that God does, everything that we have. We can have full pockets or we can have empty pockets. We can have a lot of things. We cannot have a house. We can own a house. We can have a business. We can lose a business. We can have a ministry. We can, we can live without a ministry. We, everything and in all the ways and everything is just conditions that we have in this world. It's not something that it comes and pours out from the spirit life. The spirit life is so different. So different. That when you start thinking about it, the Apostle Paul said something. He said, who will know the mind of Christ? Who will understand the mind of Christ? The Bible says, you. You see, that blows my mind. It blows my mind. It gives me speechless. What can I say to that if the Bible says that in the spirit I have something so different that my condition is t telling me to be and to work and to live and to manifest in the way that I have to live. Last year we got COVID, my wife and I, on, and, and my daughters too as well. Everyone we got COVID. We were so sick on, on December. We were just getting recovered from everything. And at that moment, churches and everything in Mexico shut down because we, we can't operate as churches the, the fee fine to open the church it was so expensive so we couldn't do it we couldn't do it so people in mexico it's not like here if, if you if we don't have a uh i mean the church building is open people they don't offering they don't tithes it's, it's different the culture so so anyhow we were paying rent we were behind and then we got COVID. praise god right we're like oh god i, will. I said D didn't i learn the the lesson i was like god really i mean uh, again like <laughs> We were, oxygen's levels were so low, we got that shad, my wife and I, we got that little shad that, okay, if someone passes away, who's going to be you, me, or who, or both, or what's going to happen next? And, and now I'm laugh about that, but at that moment, we were, like, really sick. She told me one moment, she said, can I go to the doctor? I have to tell her, no, we don't have the money. So... It's in those little moments when, when, when sometimes you feel like, okay, I failed sometimes you feel like that. But at the other side, you felt that if we live like the apostles said, I know how to live in righteousness and in poor and here and there and everything and in all the areas, is, is, is then when you start thinking about, okay, Wow, how can I apply this verse of the Bible to my life? Because at this moment, I don't feel like, like that. So at that moment, my daughter, she was the one cooking us here, there, here, everything. She, one day we were like, I was gone in a way. I didn't feel, I woke up at morning and it was late night again when I started looking at what's going on here. I receive a message. I receive a, a messenger text 
on my phone, and it was a Chinese guy. And, and I was like, okay, this is going to be a spam because I don't, I don't know nobody of Chinese people. I don't know no one. I was like, nobody, nobody. For real, yeah, for reals. I don't know nobody. So who's going to send me a text? And then he'll start saying, those type of texts, brother, you receive those emails sometimes that I want to send you money here and that and give me your bank account, stuff like that. Okay, that was, that was it. What he wrote down, I was, okay, yeah, for sure, this is spam. So I start joking. To be honest, I start, <laughs> I start joking. It's, okay, yeah, sure, I'll give you my bank account. I'll do this and that for sure. Yeah, real. And then, but who are you? And they say, oh. And then he start talking back again. And, and I, I start just joking. Like, here and there, I feel like, okay, this is like epiphany or something. I'm so bad right now doing illusions or something. So sick with COVID. And, and, and I got like, but I start texting it. And I said, okay, well, I can send them my PayPal, I think. I don't think it will be, you know, harmless. So I just send it right there. And then at that moment, I saw an email that said $500 on my account. I got like, no, oh, this is not kidding. I said, hey, I said my wife, hey, this is this Chinese guy. It takes me, it sent me this stuff. Now he asked me for a PayPal account. And, and we got $500 on an account. And she said, yes, yes, yes. are you sure this is for real? Well, well, I think it's for real because it's there. It says the email. I mean, it should be, right? And so. We went to the doctor. So we went to the doctor, and, and now we know there was a purpose for us. We still live. I mean, we're still here. But, but in a way, what I'm trying to say, if, if we're so, I don't know if the word's good saying pity or pity, or when you're like, like, like selfishness and, and, and thinking, oh, poor me, and what I'm going to do, and what's going to happen, and, and I'm devastated. If, if we're victims all the time, if we don't act from the life of the spirit and we act more from the human life and we don't manifest the fruit of the spirit sometimes we can get so stuck there and, and the fruit of the spirit is something so different second of corinthians chapter 4 verse 15 and verse 16 it says the bible all of this is for your benefit all of this is for your benefit and as god's grace reaches more and more people the bible says there will be great thanksgiving first of all it says there's a main purpose that we have on this human life the main purpose is that god grace reaches more and more people isn't it so different than the human life it gave us to think about it isn't it so different once you, we understand, once I understand that the spiritual life, it has a big purpose that overpasses me, that is, doesn't, it doesn't even, doesn't even about me, it, does, it doesn't even something about my human life, that he did something that he would just wants to use my life so the rest of the people can have grace and more and more people is reached and more and more people is reached. Then we start thinking different when we say thank you, when our gratitude starts manifesting because the Bible says there it will be great thanksgiving. So it says after we do the purpose is when we start manifesting great thanksgiving great thanksgiving this is a blessed church by the way this is a blessed church you're, you're blessed in different ways Our your condition usually will tell you no you're not blessed but your position in christ it says something so different in the bible it says something so different in the bible it says that even, even if you don't feel it, that's for real. Even if you don't believe it, that's for real. Even when you don't have it here, it's still for real. Even when you have sickness in your life and you don't have real, uh, uh, yet the healing here on your human life, the Bible says that in the spirit, you are healed already. The Bible says if you don't have money right now, in the spirit, you're rich. That's what the Bible says. That's what Christ says. So our position is so amazing. That's why the Apostle Paul says, be thankful in all circumstances. He understands the meaning of being thankful, not by the human life, but by the life of the Spirit. The life of the Spirit will guide you through 
torments, to difficult times, to hardness, to all the different things that you will be living around and having and issues and circumstances, everything you name it, everything that you name it. The life of the Spirit overpasses the human life. The life of the Spirit will give us something so different that a lot of people, they don't have. They don't have that, but they need to have that. And you have that. Can you say that to your neighbor? You have that. You have a new life. You have something different. You have something different. When I was there, and I'm gonna, about to end, if it's that okay. There's five things I like and I wrote down. My favorite ways to practice gratitude. Number one, set time aside each day to make a list. A list of what you are thankful for. Start with the tiniest details and write down even just one thing, even just one thing. Just one little thing. Write it down there. Number two, tell other people thank you. Sometimes we feel we earn it. Say thank you all the time. Thank you. When they do something kind for you, no matter how small, no matter how, what it is, say thank you. Be grateful. Be grateful for the people around you. Number three, don't allow other people bitterness or negativity, like Pastor said, or negativity, or at any other outward circumstances to influence your inner peace. The Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is peace. Amen? Peace. So don't let any circumstances around or negativity or bitterness or whatever is going on or influence your inner peace. What God already gave you, you have a peace that overpasses everything. Look for the best in everyone. Look for the best in everyone and believe and say the best about them all the time. All the time. Number four, anger, disappointment, failure, and frustration are parts of life. It is. It is normal as a human beings to have that. But don't let them become your default emotions. Because when that comes, our default emotions, then the fruit of the Spirit is not manifesting how it should be. Because now we are so stuck in our emotions, on our, on our senses, what we have, what we don't have, everything that is going on. Don't be complacent and resign yourself to victimhood. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because once you are there, then you're being governed by your human life and by your emotions. You're not letting the Spirit lead you now. So be aware of that. Be aware of that. Don't go that side. Actually choosing to live from a place of gratitude, from the place of the fruit of the Spirit, from the position that Christ gave us, it will bring you peace all the time on every circumstances, on every moment, on every part that we have. And number five, build gratitude around you with small, daily, unexpected, undeserved acts of love, compassion, grace, and forgiveness. You know that forgiveness it will give you to lead to be grateful. Sometimes we don't forget people. We don't forget what they do for us. Sometimes we're so hard on that part too. And, and we feel we earn it. They earn it. We have to be like this. But be grateful. Deliverance. Deliverance from your human life. Deliver from that part. Deliver from all that. And be grateful in all the circumstances. I live grateful because God, God and the fruit of the Spirit, He is grateful in all the ways. He gives gratefulness to everyone to live, to, li to do life, to do ministry, to do whatever we do. The Bible says, and I'm ending with this. You should pastor say like two times. We're ending, ending right? I do? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Remember, remember something. God gave us a big opportunity in this world to manifest Him. In your family, your people, everyone that is around you, everyone that is around you, they are in need of God, of Christ. And our gratefulness and our gratitude and all circumstances 
it will make a big difference out in the world. Amen? Amen. Can we pray? Yeah? Just say to God at this morning, say thank you. Just say thank you for this church. Thank you for the pastors that I have. Thank you for the leaders that we have. Thank you for my parents. Thank you for my daughters, my sons. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my family, my husband, my wife. Thank you. Just start saying thank you. Say thank you, God, because probably I don't have everything that I want. Probably I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't haven't accomplished everything, but I'm so amazed. And I just want to say thank you because I'm grateful with you because all the circumstances that I have, what I'm passing through, what I'm living, is just something that is building up my faith, building up my life for the purpose that you have for me here so everyone can know and more and more people can manifest Christ in this world. In Christ, we say amen. 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 All right. Pastor, thank you so much for letting me be here. Thank you, really. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Could I ask you just to bow your heads again just for a moment? If you are here, Pastor Rolando was talking a lot about um, our physical life and our spiritual life. And he read that verse out of John, and Jesus was meeting with Nicodemus, who was a religious expert. Uh, but he told that religious expert, you have to be born of water and of the spirit the idea of being born of water is being born of the natural birth that's how we all come out the birth canal is through that that water but being born of the spirit is a whole other thing that's what he was telling him if you're here and you haven't been born again you haven't been born of the spirit you haven't professed faith in jesus you haven't surrendered your life to him as lord l-o-r-d capital lord you haven't given him your allegiance. You haven't asked him to forgive you of your sins. You can do that this morning. Every one of us who is in this room, who worship and rejoice and are trying to be thankful in our spiritual lives and not driven by our, our carnal conditions, we're all people who have committed our life to Jesus. And we're all somewhere along that journey. None of us are perfect. We're all growing. But if you've never done that, this is your opportunity just to say, Lord, I want to surrender my life to you. Jesus, I want to confess that you were God in the flesh. You were Emmanuel. You came to sacrifice your life that my sins might be forgiven. And I want to surrender to you. I want that kind of fruit that Rolando talked about. I want that peace. I want that joy. I want that thankfulness. I want that gratitude. I want to be driven by the spirit man and not the carnal man. If you've never done that, I invite you to do that this morning. You can do it right where you sit. Just utter that prayer to the Lord right now. Dear Jesus, I want to confess that you are Lord. I want to surrender my life to you. I can't do it on my own. I've tried it too long. I need your help. I can't be in control anymore. I want you to be in control. Jesus, I surrender to you. May I start this Christmas season by being born again, a new birth, a new life. Make that your prayer today, and your life can be transformed in a way that you can't believe. God has great gifts for you. The Bible says every good gift comes from him. Would you allow him just to minister to you in this season? Lord, thank you for this word. Lord, we wrestle with our flesh. We wrestle with our circumstances. We wrestle with our condition, but we have a position in you that should supersede all of that. Help us, Lord, as we've spent so much time in the last three weeks now talking about the power of a grateful heart. Lord, we, we understand it. Now, Father, help us to implement it, that we can be the light of this world. In Jesus' name, and everybody said...